Well, I want to I want to start off this morning um, by sharing with you guys a, a story that I've probably told maybe two or three times in the congregation before, um, but it's worth telling again. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me. Uh, I, I was uh, I was around 14, 15 years old, and I went to a camp called Sakahatchee. Uh, if you're not familiar with Sakahatchee, it's a United Methodist uh, youth camp, and um, the uh, the whole purpose is really it was started in the 1970s, the late 70s. And the whole focus is it's is built around helping underprivileged um, families uh, improve their, their homes. So like all week, you have groups of kids, teenagers, and adult volunteers who are swinging hammers and um, uh, putting on new roofs and porches. And it's funded fully by the participants. And um, so th- the church that I went to made an agreement with all the youth. And they told the youth, they said, here's the deal. We will pay for you to go to the camp. Um, if, when you come back, you will get up in front of the church and give your testimony. Well, um, I was scared to death to get in front of people and talk, but um, more than my fear of public speaking was my fear of having to pay for camp. So I said that I would do it, and I agreed to it. And um, so I went to the camp. I had one of the most life-changing, phenomenal experiences uh, I've ever had. If you've never been to Sakahatchee, I would highly suggest it. There's over 2,000 youth who participate every summer in South Carolina. Just an amazing thing, but the most life-changing part was actually being in community with the people um, who were in perhaps a different socioeconomic status than I was and growing up and just getting to know them. So I got back um, from the camp, and I got up in front of the church, and I can remember I was nervous. My hands were sweating. Uh, I used to hate to get up in front of people and talk. It doesn't really bother me at all now. I, at the time, I couldn't stand it, and um, obviously. And I, I, I remember I got up, and I, I was wanting to tell them what I had been doing all week. We had been putting up what they call OSB board. So it's like, if you don't know what that is, it's like a particle board, um, kind, kind of like plywood, but like a particle board plywood, and we were putting it up on the outside of the house. And so I, I, I wanted to get up and say, you know, all week long, we've been putting up OSB board. And so for some reason, when I said it, it just came right out. I said, all week, we've been putting up SOB board. <laughs> and if you've heard me tell this before, it, it was one of the most embarrassing um, moments of my life. And I can remember, I could not retain, I could not get the congregation back. I, I could not pull them back in. Everybody was laughing. They were, I mean, I, I, I tried to get them back. They just couldn't. My parents in the back, you know, our whole family was there. And, and they just lost it. And um, so I pretty much ended up having to sit down and couldn't get anything else out without them laughing. But, um, but I will tell you this, despite that horrific mistake in sharing my testimony, it was one of the most transformative moments in my calling to ministry. Um, in fact, I would explain it like this. When I got up in front of the congregation that day, despite the mistake, um, it was like putting on a pair of shoes that fit for me. There was something about, you know, when you, like sometimes you put on a pair of shoes and they just hurt and they don't feel right, and then other time you slide your feet and you're like, man, I got to have these. There was something about when I got in front of people and I started to share the good news of Jesus Christ that I just knew that there was a calling that God had put on my life that I couldn't deny. And that was at 15 years old, and it was really when I started pursuing my call into ministry and been doing so ever since. And I share that with you to tell you this, that testimony has always been an extremely important part of my ministry um, because it had such a big impact on me. And, um, you know, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is is the word testimony and and why it is that that we testify. I mean, why do we do that? Why do we give this thing called testify? If you testify, if you look in the Bible, if you look in the Bible, you'll see that the way that the word has been spread over the years has just been by people's public testimony. I mean, that is how we got to where we were today. The people at the, at the cross testified to what happened. Is the reason we have that news today. The people who saw the, the empty tomb, the ladies that were running from it, they testified. Peter, John, they testified about what had happened. The people, over 500 people saw Jesus Christ resurrected. They testified. It was Paul who testified to the people who were going to put him in prison. He testified to the good news. And the reason we have what we do is because people have, have taken the step to share their faith with other people. And so we've been talking about, in, in, in here the past three weeks, we've been talking about what we're calling the four legs of the table. So what is the identity of this worship service called the table? And we said that, that we're going to do a, what we call a series on the four legs of the table. And so um, the first week we started off with communion, if you were here. 
We talked about why communion is crucial to what we're doing. And in the second week, we talked about the Word. That was last week, why the Word and the authority of God's Word is important. And then this week, we're going to talk about testimony. Why is testimony important to this worship service? And then next week, we're going to talk about prayer. And those are the four legs of the table. But I have today, I have somebody who's going to share their testimony with you, and so I want to make sure that I give this young lady plenty of time. And so I'm going to be short and brief. But what I do want to do is I want to run through real quickly why I believe testimony is crucial to this worship service. And, and I'm, I'm, going to give you, I'm going to give you a few words um, as to why I think it's really, really important. And I'm going to start with this one right here. We'll do them real quick. The first word is edification. I believe that our testimonies are important to our, our spiritual life because they are edifying to one another. When we testify, we edify or encourage one another in the faith. When, when, when somebody gives a testi- testimony, you realize that, that you're not the only lying, adulterous drunk in the congregation. I mean, you realize that you are not the only one who has fallen and who has separated yourself from God. I mean, sometimes you can walk into a congregation and you go, man, I am the only jacked up, screwed up person who walked in the doors today. But when we share life with each other, we realize that every single one of us is broken. It's not, I mean, it's not just about being broken and messed up. It's also about realizing that we have other things to be thankful for. You ever walk in church with your head hanging low, kind of like Cody was talking about today, and somebody shares a little bit of good news and your head is just a little bit higher? Like we remind you, hey, life ain't that bad. Jesus Christ is coming back. You ever need to hear that? Need to hear somebody go, hey, here's something good that God's doing in my life. We don't all just bring our baggage to the altar. We bring our thankfulness to the altar. Um, but we, we edify one another. We give testimony to being, to being saved by Christ's saving power. I mean, a testimony, it's, it's not that complicated. People go, oh my gosh, I could never give my testimony in front of the congregation. Yes, you could. Let me give you an example. I always tell you all this. Our house burnt down as a kid. We had firefighters come. I, I didn't like, you know, like almost die or anything. But I want you to imagine if your house was burning down and you were in your house and you didn't wake up and you woke up, all, all of a sudden you, you do wake up in the middle of the fire and there's smoke everywhere, you're, you're coughing, you're choking, you, you, you can't walk and a, and a fireman comes in and he picks you up and he carries you out of your house and he takes you out and he does, uh, he resuscitates you um, and, and, and he saves your life. Could you tell somebody that story? Of course you could. It's the same way with your testimony about Jesus Christ. It's like all it is is just saying, here's who I was, here's who Jesus is, here's how we intersected, and here's how we saved my life. We got a great example in the book of Acts, chapter 22. It's 10 verses, but I want to share it with you. You can read it on your own sometime, but but it's just Paul. I mean, and he's just, it's just so simple. Just share what, what God did. Um, if you have Acts, if you have your Bible, you look at Acts chapter 22, verses 1 through 10. I'll just read this real quickly. I just want you to hear his words. Um, hear his past. Hear how he ran into Jesus. This is his testimony. He says, Brothers and, and fathers, listen now to my defense. When they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. And then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. I studied under uh, Gamaliel, was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. Now listen, I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison as the high priest and all the council can themselves testify. I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. And what he's doing, he's talking about his past, right? His past, his bad past. And then he says how he encountered Jesus. He says, about noon, I came near Damascus, and suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, that's who he was before Paul, why do you persecute me? Well, who are you, Lord, I ask? I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord, I ask? He said, get up, Lord said, and go into Damascus. And there you'll be told all that you've been assigned to do. It wasn't that complicated, was it? That was his testimony. He said, I was broken. I was a sinner. I actually was killing Christians. 
I ran into Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ saved me. He told me what to do. So I encourage you to think about, could you share your testimony here on Sunday mornings? Could you simply bless you? Could you share your testimony? Could you just get up and, and tell somebody the good things that God has done in your life? I believe that you could. So number one is edification. Number two, listen to this, is glorification. Our testimonies bring glory to our God. So if you take the risk to come up here and to share your faith with somebody, as scary as that may feel to you, you will bring glory to God. I mean, our testimonies are supposed to point people to God, not to us. I've heard testimonies that are about people. It's like, man, I want to tell you about where I, where I was and where I am now, and they leave God out. No, that's not what we do. Our testimony is all about pointing people to what God has done through us. Our testimonies are not about how God ran into us. They're about how we ran into God. None of us were walking down the road and went, oh, my gosh, I just realized that God was walking down the road too. God, what are you doing here? Welcome to my life. Rather, it's God was already in motion. God's been in motion since the beginning of time, and you and I at some point realized that he was walking down the path with us, and we started to give him glory and praise for who he is and recognize that he is our Savior. I mean, we give him glory. It's not to glorify our own life or anything that we have done, and our testimonies don't have to be dramatic. I mean, we don't, we, we don't have to. I thought it was funny. We were back in the band room, and Emily said to the group this morning, she said, you know, she said, when I was younger, I used to wish that I was, like, hooked on drugs, so I had a good testimony. I was like, I don't know if that came out right. But, um, you know, it, but it's true. Sometimes we think, man, I, I, wish I, I, wish I, had, a, I wish I had this strong story of, of this Damascus experience. But maybe your story is just that, you know, you grew up in church, and you had a good family, and people came around and loved you, and you experienced the love of God, and you started following him, and you have ever since. And you just bring glory to him because that's kind of my life. God's just been good to me, and my family's good to me, and my church was good to me, and, and I'm just still trying to seek him and follow him, and I, and I fall short every day. But You see, we, we, we all get around a table together in this service is what I picture. We get around a table, and we just tell stories about how good God has been to us. I, I had a little bit of criticism about this testimony thing because some people said to me, you know, I, I, I don't know about people getting up sharing the testimony every week. I mean, you're paid to be the preacher. You need to get up. You need to preach every week. And all that. You know, and I get it. I get it. Listen, I, I get it. And I, I, I want, here's what I want to say. Listen, um, I picture us sitting around a table, sitting around a table. And in my family, now I know everybody's got an uncle like this, but I, everybody's got an uncle who does all the talking at Thanksgiving. Don't let anybody get a word in. You know, and they tell the jokes and the stories you've heard a thousand. Listen, I don't want to be the only one talking. You all have just as powerful stories as I do. And so I, I want to encourage you to share at the table with us and to tell your story about how God has been good. I mean, that's, that's what testify, testify means. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for his glory. Um, Galatians 1 is a, just another example, but I won't get all into it because I've got to be quick this morning, but um, Paul had this life-transforming experience. And uh, the people who used to know Paul, um, I guess in Rome, they used to know him, and, and, and they heard about how he had been changed. And they hadn't seen him since he changed. So it would be like people you went to high school with. If you're a Christian now and you used to party in high school and you used to do crazy things or whatever, I always tell y'all, but I was at Blind Horse, but you know, the people at Blind Horse, whatever, at no, but a joke. But the people who used to, people who used to know you, and, 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 and now you've changed, and, and this is what it says in Galatians 1, 23 through 24. Paul says, they only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And listen to what he says, they praise God because of me. And he doesn't say that they, they praise me because I changed. Um, or they talked about me, he says they praise God. So I think what he's saying is, um, you know, you hear Paul says all the time, he's like, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. And that's what I say about my life. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm, I'm not where I used to be for sure, and I hope you got the same, same thing. Uh, you know, our, our, our testimonies are just, just seeing how, how, how God has changed us. I mean, you, like, you have such big platforms if you share your story. I mean, I know we don't have any Justin Bieber's in here, but Justin Bieber shared his story. Kanye West has done this. Now, I don't know, I, I don't know them. I don't, I'm not judging or anything. I'm just saying, but they, they have huge platforms, and they have become followers of Jesus. 
it's just an example, but how, 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 could, how could your life change other people if they heard that you had changed in a public platform like this? So, anyway, listen to the third one. I've got to move on. The last one is liberation. I love this word liberation because I think our testimonies really set us free from bondage is what they do. If you've ever done this, we've had probably, I don't know, we've had people who have been through divorce up here. We've had people who have been through cancer. We've had people who are dying come up here and share and give faith to Jesus. And I've never heard anybody get done doing it. They're like, man, I sure wish I hadn't have done that. I made a fool of myself. Everybody that I know that's done has been like, man, that was one of the most powerful things I have ever done. I did not want to do it. You begged and pleaded me to, and I did it, and I'm grateful. But our, our testimony set us free. Um, Revelation 12, 11 says they triumphed over him. Talking about us Christians, and, and when Jesus comes back, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb, and listen, by the word of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In other words, they... they they testified no matter what, and they shared their faith. See, we claim victory over Satan, and we're set free from death, and we give credence to what God has done in our life. I mean, our world, I don't know about you all, but I think our world is in a, is in a spiritual concentration camp. Our world doesn't even know it, but they're locked and they're chained, and, and, and they don't even know. And the only way that they're going to hear that there's freedom on the outside is that somebody who was once on the inside from the outside comes back to them and says, let me tell you about something great that God has done in my life. And so your sphere of influence is a whole lot larger than you think. So, and this is what I'm saying to you today, and I'm going I'm to invite some up here in just a second, but I, what I'm saying to you today is I, I want you to think about this as, as you hear this testimony. You know, testimonies do set us free. They do set us free. We do celebrate our freedom. But here's the other important thing to think about sometimes, is that our testimony is not just about God breaking our chains. It's about God breaking our chains and us heading in the direction that he's calling us. Because sometimes people's chains get broken free and they go, I've got forgiveness, I can keep living like I want. But God says, no, I broke the chains, I broke you loose so that you could seek after me. You see, testifying is not only talking about the freedom that you have in Jesus, it's talking about how you decided to make a change in your life and follow after Jesus. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that testifying doesn't include repentance and a change of heart. Because I've heard people go, man, I was set free, thank God that he died for me. But here's the thing, yeah, he died for you, but he also called you to live differently. And so when you share with people, you go, man, here's how my life was. Here's how it is now. I'm headed in a different direction. I'm seeking after him. It's no longer about me. It's about the will of my father. So I'm going to invite somebody up today that I am very excited for you to hear her testimony of faith. She is 18 years old. Um, and so she's taken a big step of courage. I'm going to invite up Anna Claire. Anna Claire Bird, if you want to come on up. She's going to share, she's going to share uh, a little bit about her life this morning. And as she does, I always believe that it may be an encouragement to you to do the same. So thank you for your faith this morning. There you go. It's all yours. All right. Good morning. I'm Anna Claire Bird. For those of you who don't know me, I've been going to church here all my life, and I'm honored to stand before you today and share a little bit about my journey. Public speaking is not my thing, and I'm going to get completely sidetracked if I don't, so forgive me, but I'm going to read this off a piece of paper like it's a story. I shared this experience in the form of a college essay with my college counselor at school, and I was told I've got to share. So that led me to standing in front of my entire school as a senior, speaking about an experience that has shaped me into who I am today. My Bible study leader, a member here at the church, Emily Goldsmith, got a hold of it and passed it along to Justin. So I now find myself standing before you today in an attempt to share with you how and what God has used to further my faith. Today I'm going to be talking about what it means to trust. <clears throat> trust is something in my life that has meant much more to me than a word. On July the 7th, 2013, Trust was a feeling I felt I had no way of experience again. I was 12 years old. How can an experience that happened to you at such a young age affect the way you live all the days of your life there on forward? It's because of this I am the person I am today. On July the 7th, 2013, I experienced a loss. My best friend, Anna Antonakis, and her family were in a plane crash. 
one that resulted in death for each one of them. However, it wasn't just me or just my family that experienced that pain. Some of you might have experienced it as well. Considering the, the crash involved not only my friend and her family, but another family in the community, one that went to Christ Church. It's funny how God works sometimes, isn't it? Who would have known that a year later, God would have brought me into the Christ Church community? Another thing that has shaped me into the person I am today. This loss has brought me pain, doubt, and anger. This experience is one that a person should never have to go through, let alone a child. I thought to myself, how could God take away not only one, but nine people that had such an impact on the community who surrounded them? Not only in that moment, but for weeks, I lost my trust in God. I felt confused and betrayed. Why them and why now? Questions that I may not ever know the correct answer to. However, I do feel as if I found mine. It's through this experience that I've grown, not only in myself, my friendships, but my relationship with Christ. My relationships with my friends have reached a level invested so deeply in Christ that it's allowed me to grow in myself. It's through this loss that I've learned the importance of each day, the way you not only speak, but treat each and every person you come across because you truly don't know what day will be your last. This, is, this experience has taught me to give my all in each and every little thing that I do, to stop, regroup, and realize you have so much more up ahead and that those little things that felt so overbearing in the moment will be ones that you don't even remember. It's because of those obstacles that you are shaped into the person you'll later become. Don't stress the little things. Let life take it where, you, where it leads you. And never be afraid to lean on the ones who surround you. Look around you and soak up as much as you can. Because it's the days that you're living right now you'll soon lo you will soon long for. No matter what stage of life you may be in. Don't get caught up in what the future holds. And trust in God that no matter how how many turns you take on the way, you will get there. It is through this that I have learned to surrender all three things to God, and because of this, I give all glory to God no matter the situation. My athletic events, my academics, and the trials I face on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter the situation, always result to God. And I get it. I'm busy too, and sometimes you really just feel like you don't have the time for God but make time because everyone will face obstacles in their lives, some bigger than others. But the majority of the time these things happen, your trust tends to fade away. Don't let that happen. You need it. Constantly throughout my life, I've heard the phrase, God will never give you something you can't handle. And that is true. However, that being said, you have to believe he'll get you through it. I have learned that he is the missing piece. He is the way to happiness and truth. And it's now more than ever that I see the influence and power he has over my each and every day life. Bad things happen. Not only tragic events like this one, but not making the grade you want, not winning your game, losing your job, marriage struggles. I'm not saying I have experience in those areas but it's bound to happen. However, it is through all of these things that you're strengthened. At times there is doubt, and at times there will be darkness, but it is through your trust in God alone that you make it through. Trust is something in my life that I have more of now than ever. Thank you. Part, part of what I want to share about this, too, I think this is a really cool story, and, and, I, and I don't know, I don't know if you're going to slide this in there, but um, Emily Goldsmith got up and shared her testimony. Uh, we were talking, what was it, back in May? Is that what we said? Something like that. And um, 
And after Emily did that is really what led to the gathering of the group of these girls who were meeting early in the mornings and, and hanging out. Now the leading to Anna Claire's testimony. And so, you know, it's kind of contagious. You start realizing, man, hey, 18 year old can get up here and share her life story. Maybe I could do it. And so um, I just want to say I'm super proud of her, super proud of her taking this step of faith. And, um, you know, this is just an example of what we can do, just share a little bit of life together. And I want to do something special for Anna Claire this morning. Uh, we, what we've been doing with our prayer teams is we've been inviting our prayer teams to come forward before we receive communion. And I'm, I'm going to ask if our prayer teams, those who are here to pray this morning, would you all mind coming up? Are you okay if we pray over you this morning? You all right with that? If you say no, it's not going to look good. So just say uh, um, it. I'm going to ask our prayer teams to come up. Um, if you all just want to come up on the, you can come up on the stage if you want, and we'll just pray over her and pray for her journey and her faith this morning. And I appreciate all the people who come every week to pray um, and pray for you. Um, just lay a hand on somebody. We're just going to pray for Anna Claire and for her life. Father, I thank you for this awesome and powerful example of somebody who's willing to uh, give a defense of her faith, Lord, to talk about where... Uh, she's come from, Lord, where she's headed and the good things that you've done in her life. Uh, I know at this stage of her life, Lord, there's so many options and roads ahead of her, Lord. And so I just pray that you keep her close to you, put a hedge of protection around her, Lord, guard her in her relationships, um, in her education, Lord, in her future. I just thank you today, Lord, that she has been a shining example to us of what it looks like to give clear and awesome testimony about what a good God you are. I just ask you to bless her her family, bless her future, Lord, and thank you for Anna Claire today. We pray these things today in your holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Anna Claire.